And well guys, it seems that NVIDIA app has been updated. You have the NVIDIA control panel, you have GeForce Experience, which is, well, the current combo that you have now on the normal drivers, which is basically, once again, control panel, the old Windows XP control panel, plus the gaming experience where actually, where, the GeForce experience, sorry, where you actually have the recording options and so on. And some months ago, NVIDIA has announced the NVIDIA app that basically mixes everything up in one solution, basically just like AMD does it. And like I told you, it got updated and finally we have more options. Some that we did have before, but not on the app and some that NVIDIA never had before, like the automatic overclocking that you can do now on the app, easily even on laptops and AV1 recording in NVIDIA's own app. So if you had before OBS or something like that, you could record with AV1. But now on NVIDIA's own app, they can do the same as AMD. You can choose the codec to AV1 and record at 60 and 120 FPS, which is actually a thing that should have come like ages ago. But still, it is here and we're gonna test it. Like we tested today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Maximum Settings, a cloud-based gaming service where you won't need to spend thousands of dollars to upgrade your PC or a personal nuclear plan to boot up your system. Just do it! For as low as 9.95 Canadian dollars a month, you can play the most recent games on your computer even if your hardware isn't prepared. And now with increased performance and reduced latency thanks to the bare metal technology. And believe me, I tested it and it runs very well. Sign up today for your full Linux gaming PC with no resource sharing and start enjoying high-level gaming on any PC. So starting with the NVIDIA app, if you don't really know much about the app or how to download it or anything, well, the download link, the download link will be in the description. Uh, you just have to download the app and it will actually uh, overwrite your GeForce Experience app. You'll still have the control panel plus the NVIDIA app. And if you want to know about it step by step, you have this video that I made some months ago when they released the app. Um, but yeah, it is now quite better. So we still have the Ohm, we have drivers, where you can see what's new, basically kind of um, kind of a release notes, but not not entirely, not complete, because of course they won't show you the 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 bugs that are still there, but at least they, they are showing you what's fixed in terms of gaming. For example, here, GeForce Experience, flickering or black screen if instant replay is enabled. And NVIDIA app, we also have a gaming fix, FPS overlay showing NA in, multi, in multiple games, sorry. And then we have general fixes as well for CUDA, for um, problems with LG OLED panels with G-Sync. Then we have game support for Elden Ring, Pax Day, uh, Still Wakes the Deep, and so on, so on, so on. Then we have the graphic options, which basically allow you to go from performance to quality mode, and they will change the options inside the game. Uh, usually we can do that, as you can see. If you do this, the options inside the game will change. Preview value, for example, TAA, if you go to performance mode, it will change from TAA to disable due to the LSS. And then we have, for example, the for quality and other options will decrease as well. Oddly enough, as soon as you go to performance, some, <laughs> some options actually just go to high. But if you put it like in the middle ground, it will go to low, which doesn't really make much sense, but it is what it is, I guess. We have the system with the overview, with the operating system, graphics card, driver display, CPU, RAM, storage, and so on. And then we have this new part of the performance mode. And in the performance mode, we have the statistics with GPU clock, GPU power, GPU temperature, voltage, VRAM clock, basically the main statistics of the GPU. And then we have the performance limits with voltage, power, and temperature. A thing that I that I need to understand here is that, for example, I'm using MS Afterburner, and as you can see in MS Afterburner, I have the core clock to plus 180, and I have the memory clock to plus 1000. And what we can see here is that power limit is, is at 100% because this GPU doesn't really go for more, the 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes that I finished testing, thank God. Now the software picked indeed the, the temperature limit and the power limit. and 
allowing the, the the GPU to go over the power limit is already good because for GPUs that have higher power limit like 105, 115, 120, increasing the power limit alone will in most situations increase the performance automatically. So even without increasing the core clock or the VRAM frequency, just increasing the power limit will increase the performance because the GPU will clock higher. So that's a good thing for the NVIDIA app and I believe that NVIDIA is going in the right way. As for the core clock and memory clock, they are not presented here and they are you are not able to change them but now you have the automatic tuning automatic tuner which finds the best overclock settings for your GPU and maintains the performance on a regular basis. One thing that Nvidia says here is that using the automatic tuning will not void your warranty while using the, the, the core clock and VRAM frequency sliders will and that's maybe why they aren't showing the, the sliders here they are just giving you the automatic tuning that once again will increase the performance and won't void your warranty although they, they just can't prove that you that you overclock they just can't but anyway even if they could this is a good thing for people that don't really want to mess with the sliders they just go here and go automatic tuning but we'll go there i'll try the automatic tuning and see how it goes compared to my manual tuning that is plus 180 completely completely stable tested all the, the like 150 tests or more and it was completely stable plus 180 plus 1000 it was perfectly stable but we'll get there once again and the other new thing that we have is in terms of the nvidia overlay you have to go here alt z open the overlay one thing that i would like for nvidia to do is to open the overlay here in the middle instead of having it there maybe there's an option for that but i don't really know i would like to have it in the middle um or inside the nvidia app per se instead of having the overlay like this uh something like maybe like and like amd is doing they have they have it on the app on the window but as soon as you go for example for the game you have the overlay option as well but anyway we go to the options and then we have the video capture and on the video capture now we have the option to select the codec uh, i can't actually select the codec because <laughs> because i'm recording the, the desktop so that's a bummer but we do have the option to select h264 and agvc and as soon as you go for the other option you just like click on it and you have the option to record av1 so uh, AGVC is used for HDR and 4K resolution. Basically, H.264 is AVC and AGVC is H.265. They should have it like AVC slash AGVC or H.264 slash H.265. And they are basically saying that for normal videos, they're going to use the H.264, which is the option that you have on the NVIDIA software as of now. And for um, and they will use AGVC for HDR or for for 4K plus resolutions. As for the bitrate, once again, sorry because I'm recording the desktop with this. But as for the bitrate, you can go as high as 150 uh, Mbps, which is actually quite good. And I could do a comparison in between these two, AGVC or H.264 and AV1, and I already did, but on the AMD side. Although Nvidia does have a video online showing you the difference in between their codec, the H.264 and AV1. And the difference is there. And the lower the bitrate is, the more difference the codec will make. So the lower you go on the bitrate, if you're using, let's say, 8 Mbps, 10 Mbps, 12 Mbps, the lower the bitrate, the more difference the codec will make. And the V1 is definitely much better. And now going back to the automatic tuning. Well, I just set up my, my tuning to zero. So back to, to square one, let's say that, stock, and let's see what the automatic tuning does. If it can actually reach close to my results or if it will just be, well, subpar in terms of tweaking like the AMD or automatic overclocking is. A few moments later. And well, guys, here we are now after 20 huh? minutes, close to 20 minutes, let's say, uh, of automatic tuning. And all we got was plus 120 megahertz on the core and plus 200 megahertz on the VRAM. <laughs> I'm able to achieve plus 180 on the GPU tuning or sometimes even more, but usually 120 from 120 to 150, I would kind of understand from an automatic tuning, especially in beta version, but only 200 megahertz on the VRAM tuning is definitely 
not optimal. Almost every single card from the 4000 series that I have can do at least plus 1000 megahertz on the VRAM. At least. Most of them do 1500, some of them do 2000, so 200 megahertz is just laughable to say the least. And yeah, that's what we got from automatic tuning, meaning that automatic tuning is basically useless. Yes. Go to MS Afterburner, uh, use the step-by-step -step guide and do what you must. And by the way, it seems that according to MS Afterburner, the GPU tuning here, they just didn't overclock on the GPU. They also did a, a curve, a different, uh, different and completely different curve. Yeah, look at this, for example. They just raised the voltage here on these states and they made a maximum of... 2800 but the voltage and the, the curve was different basically meaning that the automatic tuning on the nvidia app does kind of a, a curve optimizer let's say that it uses a curve instead of a steady overclock and in this case i can do plus 180 like i told you and sorry about that 1000 and the overall results are much better because the frequency is also higher. And just to finish the video, I want to tell you that in terms of results, if you watched my previous video, I believe it, it was like driver only, minimal installation, full installation, and then VDA app, yes, was like that. And in some games, we did have a substantial decrease in performance. Games like PUBG, games like Hogwarts Legacy, and some others. And since the NVIDIA app was kind of updated, I decided to test it once again to see if we still had that performance drop and I can show you in order to not make more charts and so on I'll just show you here really really fast for example Hogwarts Legacy was one of the games where we had performance decrease so let me just open the Hogwarts Legacy then GPU base tests go to the 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes Hogwarts Legacy as well I just tested it like last night yeah you can see here the date 5666 six, six. and as you can see in terms of performance it is basically the same and within the margin of error so no app the the default driver plus geforce experience driver plus the app 94 on the geforce experience versus 93 on the app uh, on uh, at 1440p we have one more fps on the app and the only the the only difference that we have is that geforce experience does have more fps at 4k compared to the app but this is because of the testing methodology um, and i knew this would happen and i didn't i didn't want to make any charts and that, that's the reason um, but I'm telling you why now, but for example, there are more games like, let's say Modern Warfare 2, and especially, let's say, especially Ratchet and Clank, that have um, a big difference, let's see what we have here, with Ratchet and Clank, I have it on the Ray Tracing benchmarks, Ratchet and Clank, let's see the difference that we have, this is 4K, I didn't test 4K before, but as you can see, 120.5, 120.6. So it is basically on par. 35 and the app actually even has higher 1% lows. 40 versus 35. And 83.7 versus 83.7. It has basically the same FPS numbers. And the app actually delivers higher 1% lows. So it is a win-win situation in this scenario, meaning that NVIDIA did fix the performance drop and we now have the same FPS numbers in some cases like we see here, Ratchet & Clank, we even have more performance. We have AV1 recording at 30, 60 and 120 FPS. And we also have the automatic overclocking that for me, doesn't really make much, but if you want to use it, and especially if you have a laptop where you can't overclock at all, the automatic tuning may help in some scenarios. But yeah, it is what it is. And well, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. By the way, for you guys still asking for the Hot Wood Rental in 2024 settings, don't worry. I'll be doing them right after the 24.6.1 drivers video. I'm just waiting for the drivers to come. After the drivers come, I will do the, the how to adrenaline 2024. I, I now am working with, um, with the next video of GPU comparisons with a 4060 Ti 16 gigabytes versus the 7700 XT since they are basically at the same price right now. And my brother is actually currently finishing the testing of the 8400F, basically, to do the CPU comparison in between the 5600X versus 7500F versus 8400F. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching once again and see you in the next video. Cheers.